On this day in 2015, Rick Barnes was tabbed as Tennessee's next men's basketball coach. Has he exceeded your expectations or has he come up short? A salute to the Swain event. Jason Swain will conclude our show. We'll even get Ben McKeon here to talk a little baseball. All that and more here on a Friday Locked on Balls. You are Locked on Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome into this edition of Locked On Balls. I am your host, Eric Kane. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Kaner, and you can find the show at Locked On Balls. We have had a fun week of shows. Locked On Balls, every single weekday morning when you wake up on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Can't thank you enough for uh, hanging out with me here today. Like I said in the cold open, we're going to give a salute to the Swain events. A um, little bit more details on that coming up, and it's kind of funny because the Swain event, I do morning radio. It's been a competitor since I've been in radio. But Jason Swain's going to the Sports Animal, and they're going to have their final um, Monday through Friday type show uh, here coming up this morning. So uh, going to have Jason on to talk a little bit about that. Going to have Ben McKee on uh, to preview Tennessee baseball at Vanderbilt. I'm going to ask him about that. So that's coming up later in the show. But right now, I want to discuss... Rick Barnes. It was on this day. I lie. It was on Thursday. At the time of this recording, it was on this day, but you guys know. Uh, Thursday, back in 2015, Rick Barnes was named Tennessee's men's basketball coach. What's your thoughts so far? Has he been about what you've expected? Has he exceeded your expectations? Has it been about higher? Has he underperformed? What say you? That's what we're going to talk about here on Locked on Vols. I do radio in Knoxville, Tennessee again at 991 The Sports Animal. I write for the rival site covering the University of Tennessee at VolQuest.com. If you're new to the show, appreciate you guys for uh, giving us a chance. Hope you stay around. Rick Barnes is a Hall of Fame basketball coach. No if ands, buts about it. What he's done at Providence, what he's done at Clemson, what he's done at Texas and what he's done at Tennessee. He was also the head coach at uh, George Mason for, I think, two seasons. Uh, that was his first gig, and then he was at Providence for a little while. He was at Clemson for um, five years, and then Texas for a long, long time, and then uh, has been at Tennessee since 2015. Um, you know, so far, he's made one Final Four appearance. That was all the way back in 2003. Uh, he has made, let's see here. He has gone to the Elite Eight on three separate occasions, um, and uh, he's been to the Sweet 16 countless, countless times. So he's he's done his part, right? I mean, he, he's been a pretty good coach and everything, um, but the biggest draw, and we talk about on this show all the time, is that he can't win late in March. He can't win in the big tournament. He's been to the tournament 26 times. He's only been to the Final Four one time. He's only been to the Elite Eight three times, and those came back with his teams at Texas. But the last couple of years at Texas, and then this is why they kind of ushered him out, he made two Elite Eight appearances in three seasons from 06 through 08, and then from 09 all the way to 15, it went like this. Round of 32, round of 64, round of 32, round of 64, CBI first round. Round of 32, round of 64, and then they they ushered Rick Barnes out of Austin. Started off really well in Austin. Round of 64, 32, 64, Sweet 16, Final Four, Sweet 16, 64, then Elite Eight, round of 32, Elite Eight. Uh, since being at Tennessee, it has looked like this. All right, got higher for the 2015-2016 season. That record finish 15-19, and 6-12 and 12 in the SEC, no postseason. 2016-17, Tennessee got better. 16-16, and 8-10 and 10 in Southeastern Conference play, no postseason. Then 2017-2018, all right, when Tennessee was picked to finish, gosh, um, what was it, like 12th in the SEC? I mean, it was bad, right? 26-9, and 13-5 and in the, in, or in the SEC, round of 32. Tied for first in the conference. 2018-19, this was the really, really good year. 31-6. 15 and 3 in the SEC, finished tied for second in the conference and made it to the Sweet 16. Of course, 17 and 14, much of a rebuilding year in 2019, 2020. That season got cut got cut short due to COVID. I don't believe Tennessee was headed to the postseason anyway that year, but it doesn't count. It got, got cut short. 
last year out in the first round after an 18 and nine regular season. And then this year out in the round of 32 after a 27 and eight uh, regular season where Rick Barnes was whenever taking over this program. Donnie Tindall was ushered out. There was a failure of administration for the higher ups. In my opinion, it was in a very, very, very bad state. Rick Barnes has built Tennessee and you've heard me say this so many times. So I'm going to try not to be as repetitive, but Rick Barnes has built Tennessee into a national contender because of Rick Barnes. Tennessee's basketball program is in contention to win a national championship every single year. Of course, you have to have experience. You have to have the perfect blend. Tennessee's team was as good as anybody's this year, in my opinion, right? Um, last year's team was not, even though you had two first round draft picks. I just kind of, you need that it factor, right? I don't know what's in store for next season, but the way Tennessee plays defense, the way Tennessee schedules, the way Tennessee's recruiting right now, and the culture and attitude brought for, uh, from Rick Barnes to this program is a reason Tennessee is where it is. Tennessee's a good basketball team. Tennessee is an excellent basketball program now because of Rick Barnes. So in that area, I would say he far exceeded any expectations since coming over from Texas when Tennessee got rid of De uh, Donnie Tindall and Tennessee went and hired Rick Barnes. But here's the caveat. You guys heard me say this as well. You got to win in March, right? Tennessee did win in March earlier this month, uh, doing something it hadn't done for the first time in 42 years. It won the SEC tournament. That's awesome. I think it truly means something. It meant something for those players. It meant something for the fans. Absolutely. It didn't mean anything to the NCAA selection committee. Tennessee was still a three seed, but you know, it doesn't matter when you get out in the round of 32, I guess. Point being, it meant something. Truly, it did. But that's not the tournament at the end of the day that you want to be cutting down the nets for. You want to be cutting down the debts in the Final Four. Of course, um, tournament basketball is so unpredictable. It is so challenging. However, you have seven seasons as head coach at Tennessee, four of which you've gone to the NCAA tournament, one of which you've advanced to the second weekend. Again, Rick Barnes' mantra is second round wreck. Let's not let's not hide behind that. Okay. Let's not hide behind that. Can both be true? Can you be a Hall of Fame coach? Can you be a really, really good coach, but not have as much success in March? I think so. And again, he's still coaching. Uh, he can still change this narrative a little bit. It's not like he hasn't done it before. Again, he's been to the Sweet 16 countless times. He's made he's made a final four appearance. He's gone to the Elite Eight three times. He's won coach of the year in three different conferences. He's won th the conference in three different uh he's won he's led his team to a conference championship in three different conferences and here at tennessee he's won both a regular season championship and now a tournament championship he is a great coach tennessee is far better with rick barnes than without rick barnes but it is an interesting conversation to have and kind of polling the fan base we had a lot of guys and gals call into our radio show tsl on 991 the sports animal thursday morning and kind of kind of present all these different arguments and how their expectations is you know well rick barnes he's a product of his own success uh, he's a victim of, of his own success because of the success he had at florida gosh i'm off of it today at texas <laughs> and uh you know that or it's just that uh he's very underwhelming in the tournament but a great regular season coach however you view it tennessee is better off with rick barnes than without but um, it's a good conversation to have, and just knowing where Tennessee's basketball program was, the inconsistencies. Sure, you had. I mean, you've had success at points in times, right? But Tennessee, Rick Barnes built Tennessee as a program and a culture, not just a good basketball team, a good basketball program that I believe will roll on once he's gone, especially if uh, his successor is from the Rick Barnes disciple tree. So a good conversation to have, and not one that we haven't had on the show before. We've had it plenty of plenty of times. Um, Rick Barnes got that contract extension of one year. He'll be through the end of the 2026, 2027 season. We'll see if he coaches out the length of his contract. But um, uh, seven years ago, I guess at the time of you're listening to this yesterday, uh, Tennessee hired Rick Barnes to be, uh, it's next basketball uh, coach, and uh, it's been fun. There's been a lot of good basketball since then, so wanted to bring that up. All right, uh, Ben McKee, VolQuest.com, one of my good friends, will stop by and preview Tennessee and Vanderbilt, Tennessee baseball at Vanderbilt this weekend. A lot of good stuff upcoming. We'll have Jason Swain, um, who will join Josh Ward on the new 12-3 to 3 time slot on the Sports Animal beginning on Monday. Jason Swain of the Swain event will check in with us in segment number three. But first, let's talk about Bill Barr, okay? Bill Barr, that time of the year, trying to get slim, trying to look your best because swimsuit season's right around the corner. 
And I don't want you to freak out. There's an easy alternative to those uh, unhealthy candy bars, and they are the Built Bars, okay? They're good for you. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, 17 grams of protein, all right? It's fantastic for you, especially considering if you are a candy bar eater. So there's somewhere sitting around 240 calories. That's just not good for you. It's filled, infused with protein, 17 grams of it. It's good for you, and they taste good as well. The selection, the variety is something that you're going to enjoy. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and new for this month, the white chocolate cookies and cream. They are all delicious. All new flavors are coming out all the time. If you think a flavor might sound good, they're going to make it, okay? It'll be delicious, and it will be good just for you. If you like what you're hearing right now, go to Built.com and check it out more for yourself. And while you're there, use the promo code LOCK15. You're going to get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off. That is all at Built.com. Welcome back into this Friday edition of Locked on Vols. It is your first listen each and every day. Can't thank you enough for hanging out with me here today. And a big weekend for the University of Tennessee baseball team, the number one volunteers at the number nine Commodores of Vanderbilt arch rival anytime Tennessee and Vanderbilt meet on the diamond at least here lately in the series it is going to be a good one Ben McKee what is up my man Eric Kane my guy how are you doing well um this is very highly anticipated national matchup uh Tennessee handled business took care of Ole Miss sweeping them in Oxford last weekend uh the uh, road doesn't get any easier going to be uh, at Vanderbilt against a, a very quality opponent Dropped two or three to South Carolina last weekend, but uh, a team that's going to be ready to go this weekend. Yeah, it's going to be a fun weekend of baseball. Uh, Vanderbilt, a, a top 10 team in their own right. A team that's kind of laying in the weeds, but a, but a team that is more than capable of knocking off Tennessee. And I think this is going to be a far more competitive weekend than it was in Ole Miss, just because Vandy has more pitching than Ole Miss. But uh, even with Vandy having more pitching than Ole Miss, I, I do think there's some holes that Tennessee can take advantage of. Vandy's uh, starter in game three is unsettled. They, they've got a freshman on the mound in game two who did not pitch well against Carolina. Uh, there are some injuries w- within that rotation and pitching staff. And uh, this Tennessee lineup, as we well know, has plenty of talent and depth. And uh, I expect them to, to take care of business at the plate. Uh, and if Chase Burns, Chase Dolander, Drew B, if they continue to pitch the way that they just uh, it should be another series win for T, but I, again, I do expect a, a far more competitive weekend uh, than there was last weekend in Oxford. What's the story there with the with the day three starter um, injuries? Uh, I know the last four uh, Sundays they've they, they've gone with four different guys, not solidified here of late. What, what's the issue there with the the third man in the rotation? Yeah, I think it's just trying to figure out roles uh, for for the most part. I mean, last year you had Jack Leiter, you had Kumar Rocker, two of uh, the the best pitchers in the game, Jack Leiter, a, a first round pick. I believe he went t- top ten, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, maybe top five. Uh, one of the first guys off the board, uh, plain and simple. And Kumar Rocker was also a first round pick, who, if not for an, a weird injury situation there with the Mets, would be in Mets spring training right now. Uh, so I think it's just kind of revamping the rotation after losing. Uh, two big names with, with those guys. And uh, again, they have a lot of talent, but uh, a lot of youngsters uh, as well. So uh, just watching Vanderbilt from afar, uh, don't believe it's really an injury type of situation. It's just in college baseball, it's hard to find three and four really quality starters. Uh, that That's the difference between the, the great teams and the good teams. And Vanderbilt is on the verge of being a great team, and and they're hoping that they can find a third starter in order to do so. Enrique Bradfield Jr. He is a guy that uh, any college baseball fan knows. Um, He has been the thorn to Tennessee's uh, (laughs) defending the run game conversation all year long. It's finally here. Uh, Tennessee's pitchers, Tennessee's catching uh, catchers and Evan Russell will have to manage Bradfield Jr. on the base pass. He is 16 to 16, uh, 16 attempts, 16 steals. Um, What's the challenge there for Tennessee? Obviously, it's going to be a big one. Yeah, a huge challenge, not not just for for Evan Russell, but Tennessee's pitchers as well. And unfortunately, I, I think the only solution is to, to not allow him to get on base. But that's what makes him such a, a great player. You've seen Billy Hamilton come through in the past and 
break records in the minor leagues for stolen bases in a season. But but Enrique Bradfield Jr. is truly a complete player, whereas Billy Hamilton wasn't. And I realize that I'm professional baseball to college baseball. Billy Hamilton would have been perfectly uh, fine in, in college, uh, and, and he was. But uh, Enrique Bradfield Jr., a, a more complete player for his respective league uh, at, at this current time than than a Billy Hamilton. And he gets on base. Uh, it doesn't hit for a lot of power, but he's got some pop in his bat. Uh, he can hit it in the gaps and, and stretch a, a double into a triple. He, he rips it down the, the line. Uh, goes opposite field. I mean, he, he can do it all. And, again, he likes to stretch singles in the doubles, doubles in the triples. And uh, Tennessee's pitchers are, are really going to have to help Evan Russell back there. We we all know he's no Yadier Molina. Uh, he's done a solid job framing, blocking balls, stealing strikes. Uh, but because he just transitioned to the position, he's not going to throw guys out, especially in, in Enrique Bradfield Jr., so really the only solution is to simply not allow him to get on base. But that's what makes it so challenging is because he is such a good hitter. He's not just a speedster. He's truly an all-around player. And he can really wreck the weekend for Tennessee single-handedly. Uh, a couple of things here of injury-related now. Wednesday against Western Carolina, Blake, Blake Tidwell made his season debut. Got rocked a little bit, but responded well. Uh, gave up a triple, gave up a double, had an error behind him, gave up a run. Got two strikeouts and then induced a pop out uh, as he continues to work himself back out. He'll make some more relief appearances and then uh, continue to get stretched out. And then Jared Dickey, who uh, exited the uh, uh, the series against Ole Miss last weekend, a bone bruise on his foot. Received some good news this week uh, in terms of the the grand scheme of things. I think Tennessee is is in in terms of. Uh, Injury situation in a pretty decent spot. Of course, you're always going to be banged up and bruised, but uh, that Jared Dickey news could have been a whole lot worse this week. It really could have, and you said it perfectly. You're, you're always going to deal with nicks and knacks, especially this time of the year when you're dealing with a roster of 35 guys. And, and technically, I think it's like 38 guys or, or so because of uh, the COVID, the free COVID years for Redmond and Evan Russell and Luke Lipsius. You're, you're going to have guys going through stuff, but they they really avoided disaster with Jared Dickey. There were some long faces in the clubhouse on Sunday after the Ole Miss win. Uh, he was on crutches. It wasn't sounding all that well, but came back and good news with the MRI. And, uh, it's a deep bone bruise in his foot, and it's it's going to come down to pain tolerance and how how much pain can he play through. I think he will be available this weekend, uh, but don't know that he will actually be used. I mean, he could possibly be a pinch hitter or a DH, but but that would be best case scenario. And with the way Tennessee treats injuries, I, I think that they would hold him out. Uh, but at, at least you gain Blade back on the mound. I know it's two different positions, but at least you make it to uh, further bolster the team. And uh, you're right, he did a good job of bouncing back just by giving up a leadoff triple and double. And it was like spring training for him. And at the end of the day, in that particular outing, the results don't really matter. It was good to see that his shoulder felt good afterwards. It was good to see the fastball get up to 96, 97 a couple of different times. And he didn't spot his first couple of pitches. Tony Vitello flat out said the first two pitches sucked. And then he kind of got rolling from there and was able to strike out two guys and then get a weak pop up the center to get out of the inning. So good to see that his fastball was at the velo it needed to. The slider looked good. And most importantly, his shoulder felt fine afterwards. All right, so it's going to be a good one. Tennessee at Vanderbilt, uh, a chance to really um, really solidify what Tennessee is right now if you haven't done so already last week against Ole Miss. So national televised games, Friday night, 7 o'clock. It's going to be on ESPN2. Saturday's game is going to be on the SEC Network. And, of course, we'll have coverage at uh, 99.1 with John Wilkerson on the call all weekend long. Follow Ben McKee on Twitter at, B, at, B, uh, at Ben McKee 14 There it is. And uh, he does a great job. He'll be on site uh, covering the game for Fall Quest. And uh, real quick, uh, last thing, and I, I did not tell you I'm doing this, but you are leading in. You're the opener uh, uh, for Jason Swain. He's going to join us in the final segment of the show. Um, Jason is moving to the Sports Animal, as you are as well. Uh, going to be some different roles, uh, but for the last what four or five years, you've been uh, you've been the Robin to his Batman, and uh, it's been a, it's been a really really awesome. Awesome show, the Swain event. It's going to look a little bit different now. It's going over to the, the Sports Animal and all that. But um, to, uh, I guess today is going to be 
uh, y'all's last show um, together in this format. So, uh, you know, w- what's this ride been like and how excited are you for, for Swain and obviously for what's to come uh, here in the future? Yeah, six years, Swain. Uh, it, it's been a, a long ride and uh, I owe a lot to Swain. Uh, I, I wouldn't be where I am professionally if it wasn't for Swain. And I started off as an intern and just shooting him a, a message on Facebook asking, hey, can I can I come intern? with the show and it started off uh monday wednesday friday because i had 8 a.m classes on tuesday and thursday at ut and uh there, there's been co-hosts kind of move on to other things and i just kept kind of moving up and swain has given me so much and uh we're recording this on thursday afternoon but thursday morning uh, our, our thursday morning show was, was very emotional uh, for both of us and uh, we haven't gotten through the friday show but if you're listening I, i'm sure that we both struggled to get through through the friday show because uh, the Swain event family has just meant so much to, to each other. And uh, Swain specifically just means so much to me. I mean, he, he's a big brother that I that I never had. He, he's truly family. And uh, we, we had a whole lot of fun together. And uh, I, I'm going to miss the the Monday through Friday, 7, 10 in, in the morning, 15 hours a week with him. Uh, but very, very excited. Uh, thoroughly believe that uh, the the sports animal is, is getting a, a – just a huge addition. I can't understate it. Uh, I mean, I'm struggling to get words out to just emphasize how great of an addition uh, he's going to be and, and very excited for him. Uh, very excited for Josh Ward and uh, he'll do great things. And uh, again, it, it was a lovely ride and I owe a lot to Swain and just am so, so, so happy for him. Yeah, change is, change is never easy, uh, but change does not have to be a bad thing. And I think, uh, I think in this case, it's going to be a great thing. And uh, Ben's going to come over to the sports animal and um, you know, kind of carve out a role and we're ex- really excited about that. Uh, you and I talked about working together a couple of years ago and now we work together at VolQuest and now we're going to start working together at the radio station. And, um, you know, who knows what that can lead to. Uh, I have high hopes and um, it's uh, it's it's I don't know. Cha- I, I have a hard time dealing with change a lot of the times, but uh, I think this is going to be a good thing. But just wanted to say again, I, I, I didn't tell Ben I was going to do this, so he might cuss me out after this, but uh awesome awesome job be proud of what you guys did and uh it's not over with it's just going to change a little bit so i uh, really really looking forward to that with that being said we'll have jason coming on here in just a couple of moments ben thanks so much man continue that awesome baseball coverage we'll be following you on twitter and following your work at volquest.com and uh hoping for a, a tennessee series win this weekend at vanderbilt appreciate you having me on eric all right that has been mckee VolQuest.com. After months of playing a college basketball, and it's determined who the top four teams are. The Final Four, it's coming up this weekend. It's going to determine who's going to the national championship. BetOnline.net, your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information. For all the latest odds, contests, and player pops, you name it. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your latest sports developments, including podcast reviews from all the leagues uh, in all the seasons. It's not just basketball either. It's football. It's uh, you know, boxing, it's UFC, it's it's tennis, it's soccer, it's whatever sport you can possibly think of. Bet online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering informational needs, including live betting options in your favorites, Las Vegas casino games. See, I played the total, um, you know, in last week's Elite Eight action in two of the games, and I came out on top. You know, I took the underdog spread for, uh, you know, one of those uh, Kansas and, and um, was it Kansas and Providence last Friday night and came out on top. I had a good weekend last week at betonline.net in Elite Eight action. I'm trying to funnel that over into Final Four action. And you can as well. Head on over to the website, use your mobile device, learn more about the latest trends and all of the action. Bet Online, it is where the game starts. Well, we just spoke with Ben McKee. Now let's bring on Jason Swain, the other half of the Swain events. And, uh, of course, preparing for a big move over to 99.1, the sports animal. Going to be a new co-worker of mine, so excited about that. Jason, welcome to the show. Really appreciate the time. What's up, Eric? Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, this is a big move, man. I mean, what you've done for the past, gosh, how long you been doing this Wayne event? Uh, probably 11, 11, 12 years. Um, just having a show independently. I've been doing this thing for eight years. So man, it's been, it's been, it's been fun. Uh, yeah. For sure. I, so it's good to be with you, though. Yeah, it's it's been awesome, man. Uh, of course, you know, do, I'm part of the morning show over at the Sports Animal, and you guys were on the air at the same time of us, and and now you're coming over, so that's really really neat. 
Um, still going to be a variation of the Swain event at nighttime, and you know more details on that, I'm sure, later from you. But how excited are you for um, this career change? Not career change, but I guess this career move, kind of going from doing your own thing, now joining up with uh, with uh, the sports animal. Now, I'll be honest, Eric, you know, it's it's uh, it's bittersweet, to be honest. I mean, I'm excited about the opportunity to, to, to be on a bigger platform and uh, explore some new, new um, avenues and um, – do some new new things with different people and uh, looking forward to the structure of everything and you know having a lot of help for sure. Um, happy about that, excited about that. Uh, on the other hand, you know, we built something special for, for eight years independently. And uh, there was a, a group that always was there in the morning and it was like family. And uh, in a way it feels like kind of leaving them a little bit, even though I know I'm not, they're coming over, uh, but it's a big change to everybody. So, uh, on one hand, I'm super, super excited, pumped, thrilled, can't wait to get started. On the other hand, you know, I'm, I'm, I reminisce and kind of reflect and think about, you know, what we built. I'm not saying it's going on anything, but it's just it's going to be different. So I've had a range of emotions, but I've been excited. Uh, I've been thinking about all the people that's helped me and all the people that we, uh, have, you know, done the show and it's impacted so much in the last couple of years. Yeah, I would I would assume it's a whirlwind of emotions, especially this past uh, this past week being your last week from the normal seven to ten slot. And at the time of this recording, maybe you have already completed your last show on Friday because you're set to uh, begin at noon on Monday with Josh Ward, uh, ninety nine one the Sports Animal, noon to three. And so, uh, really really excited about that. But it's something you just kept on mentioning. Like, I mean, they can come on, right? It's not like it's kind of like yeah. you're leaving, but you're not. Um, but that little niche, that little family, um, I, I know that uh, bittersweet, the way you describe it, I know that's that's true for you because I look at myself with this podcast and, and not to the level of the Swain event, but I, I get what you're feeling. So, but but I, I feel like if you're if you're following and, and your your family could come on and listen to you guys from noon to three and podcasts as well, it'll it'll still be a good deal. No, absolutely. You know, everyone got everyone has their routines. You know, um, the mornings may be perfect, awesome for people. Who may be working at home, you never know someone's situation. Um, you know, 12 to 3 may be perfect for someone, but it's change. And that's one thing that's constant about life is change. Change is constant. Change is going to happen whether you like it or not. So, you know, here we are. we excited. It, it'll feel like, I guess, two uh, families kind of getting together after, a, after you know, a, a divorce between a mom and dad. But then you have a blended family. That's what it's going to feel like. But uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. I think what we all have in common is – you know, our coverage of Tennessee, our passion to be professional, um, to be fair, to, to be honest and, and work our butts off and treat people with respect and have fun. So uh, that's why I think it's going to be a, a nice marriage. Well, a couple of things I want to ask you. First of all, you're you've been doing mornings for so long. I don't I don't know if you're a morning person or not, but what's it going to be like moving from the seven to ten slot to the noon to three? Uh, you're still going to have to get up, take the kids to school, all that type of stuff. I know all that, but a later start to your on air day, I guess that that could be exciting. Maybe that is for you. It it it'll be different. You know, I haven't taken I haven't took my kids to school in forever. I picked them up, you know, for years. I, you know, I'm in charge of picking them up, but the drop off is something that, you know, that's going to be new for me. I'll still get up early. Cause you know, got to get the kids ready. Got to get the breakfast uh, on the table. I'll do the cooking uh, in here. Most of the time, got to make sure wifey's coffee is nice and hot, but um, <laughs> I'll have some different things to do in the morning. Just won't be, won't be talking. So uh, I had a lot of time to kind of think and, and uh, put the show together and, and uh, figure out what I'm going to talk about there at, at 12 with Josh and kind of more time to, to prep just a different, time slot but yeah it's gonna be different eric just waking up and not having to jump on the air with crusty eyes and a stinking breath <laughs> from a guy that's done mornings for uh almost five years now uh love mornings it's awesome there's nothing like it but uh that that day when that day comes to where i can make a change i'm gonna be looking forward to it for sure absolutely uh, absolutely you kind of mentioned a little bit there uh your excitement level josh ward i mean he's been doing radio in this market for quite some time. I, he might have been at the University of Tennessee when you were playing. I'm not really sure if you guys overlapped at all, but you've known Josh for quite some time. He's a pro. He is uh, he, he is really good at what he does. And uh, how excited are you to to start this new partnership? Well, iron sharp is iron. And, you know, I wanted to be with someone if I was going to do the show with somebody else that was uh, just as good, if not better. And uh, I think uh, that's the case with Josh. I mean, he's been doing it a very long time at a high level, uh, very professional and 
You know, he has this humor that I keep hearing about. I got a little glim- uh, you know, glimpse of it uh, recently, so I think it's going to work out well and we're going to have a lot of fun and we got a lot in common. But I'm um, looking forward to working with, with, with Josh. I think it's going to be great. What's the without giving too much away? And and I know it's it's you know in radio and and stuff it, it takes it takes a while to get things going. Um, you know it's going to take a couple of months to really get in the groove of a new show with a new partner, and and that's all okay. What are some of the things that we can look forward to uh, in this show uh, with you and Josh? Maybe some different dynamics in terms of features, or you know, what are you guys going to be about? Um, being fair, being honest, being truthful, having fun. Um. You know, being, you know, we want to take, and I'll, I'll speak for myself. I won't speak for Josh. Um, I'll just say what, I, what I've what i done and what I want to bring and what I am going to bring. Um, and, you know, we want to, um, you know, people have their lives, right? And it can be good, it can be bad. I mean, things can be going on. And people use sports to escape, whether – you know, there's family things going on, work things going on, and you know we want to be there to escape for for people for three hours, and that's to inform you, that's to entertain you, that's to you know feel like you're sitting down at the table just having a conversation with two guys talking about Tennessee or talking about sports in general, and that's that's how I've done things, and you know just sitting and talking with Josh, and that's that's how he wants to do things as well. So uh, that's that's something I can promise for sure. There's some features I did on my program that we're going to bring over, you know, we're going to highlight positivity in and outside of sports, people doing good things and uplifting people. That's something I believe that's important, especially today. Uh, we have so many people tearing each other down. Uh, we're going to highlight, you know, people doing good things and, and uh, making other people's lives better and throwing value behind someone else. So that's something that we're going to bring to the show and looking forward to doing it every single day. Yeah, I'm about that. Uh, sign me up for that. I'm looking forward to, uh, to hearing that. We need, you're, you're exactly right. We need more of that in the world. And, uh, the platform that we have behind a microphone uh, is something that I know you don't. I don't either. Don't take it lightly. And so um, that, that, that's an awesome responsibility there. Uh, one of my best friends, God, I go to war for that guy. He was your opening act, by the way. And I joked around with him, uh, you know, the the Robin to your Batman, Ben McKee, who I know you think the world of him um, does uh, an awesome, literally anything he does. He does a great job doing it. And uh, one of the hardest workers I've I've ever met. I've been working with him for, I guess, the past, you know, five, six years. And he's going to come over too. And, you know, we're going to carve out a role and everything. And I'm excited about the future of, of Ben over here as well. But uh, you couldn't have done the swain of it, especially the last couple of years without Ben McKee. No, for sure. I mean, uh, you want to be around like-minded people. And Ben is a grinder. Uh, he's from Huntsville. So, you know, he submitted his email to me a couple of years ago to intern. You know, honestly, that was the only thing that attracted me was to see that he was from Huntsville, from the same neck of woods that, that I was from. So, uh, from day one, he's been about his business. He's about doing it the right way and outworking everybody else, and uh, that's what he's done. I'm happy to see him grow. Been in his wedding. Uh, now he's about to be a father. It's just cool to kind of see him um, grow into uh, a great uh, journalist, and, and now he's going to be a great, great father. He's already a great husband, so. Uh, this business is about relationships. And I think life is about relationships. And so uh, it's been really cool to grow with Ben and see him, you know, take off his career and look forward to seeing him do the same thing and dead sports animal. Jason Swain, host of the Swain event, the final episode coming up Friday morning, 7 to 10. Of course, you can podcast it beginning Monday, noon to 3. He will join Josh Ward for the first uh, show on the sports animal. And uh, you can count me among the many who are really, really looking forward to that. <laughs> Um, I again, I apologize if you haven't made this announcement or anything like that. But w- what are some of the plans? I know you're still going to try to do some night stuff in the future and maybe do a show here and there about seven, eight o'clock at night. Uh, what, what does that look like right now? I know it's probably a work in progress. Yeah, I mean, it is, Eric, because um, there's a lot of change right now. And, and um, you know, my family's so used to everything kind of winding down at night. And I do some other things. You know, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. So, you know, I do some other things. And so, uh, it won't be that hard to kind of figure out, but you know you don't want to mess with Tennessee basketball you know, during basketball season. Obviously, you don't want to mess with Tennessee football. There's some things here in Knoxville during the week that uh, that's very, very important. So you don't want to uh, mess with those times either. So just trying to figure out the right time that's something we can do consistently and not change it. That's the that's the main thing. But uh, you're absolutely right. You know, still gonna do the show, the Swain event. It's just gonna be a little different as far as 
uh, when and the time won't be every single day, but it'll be once a week in the evenings. Got to pick out the rest, the, the best day uh, to do that. So uh, that's still a work in progress. Eric, looking forward to kind of announcing that once we get everything uh, finalized. Awesome, man, Jason. Looking forward to a new beginning starting on uh, Monday with Josh Ward on the Sports Animal. And of course, your Twitter handle's right there, Swain Event. Give him a follow and uh, check out his work. He does awesome, awesome job. Really looking forward to this new dynamic. Jason, thank you so much, man. Thank you, Eric. All right, it's Jason Swain. I am looking forward to what he is going to bring to the table. A long overdue coming to the Sports Animal, and he is going to be uh, just awesome. That's going to do it here for today's episode of Locked On Vols. Big thanks to Ben McKee and Jason Swain for stopping by. Thanks so much to you for making Locked On Vols your first listen every weekday morning uh, when you get up. Available on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. That'll do it here for today. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and enjoy your weekend, everybody. 